Good afternoon, members of the community. My name is Mary Dale Schofield. I live in an apartment in South Portland, in an independent <coughs> apartment. I have lived there for the past 12 years. It, it is my home where my granddaughter who lives out of state comes to visit me. It is where my elderly mother who lives in New York comes to visit me. It is where I have called home for the past 12 years. I am a success. I live independently in my apartment now because I lived in PNMI for eight years previously. At that time, I was unable to fully care for myself. And while I got my medication straightened and stabilized, I learned independent living skills such as budgeting and living with limited means. PNMIs are places where people can stay temporarily when they need help. There are many people that need to transition from one situation to another with minimal oversight and care for people who have potential to live on their own. Whatever the reason people fall under that category, it is so crucial that these people get better in a home environment with a little help. I know many people that went on from group home living and live independent and have for longer than me. Instead of putting people from the hospital onto the streets, group home living is just right for someone like, like how I was. For a young adult that had emotional problems, living skills are something that needs to be learned. And it's something all these homes have in common. They teach you that. I am a success story. Please consider the importance of this. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Mary William Savon Winslow. I am here to talk to the objections again. All the eliminations by Count Grandma Page. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am 64, 100 percent disabled for the last 22 years by a brain stem aneurysm, followed by a massive stroke. I was not able to walk, lost all balance. And as you can hear, I pronounced speech impediment. Prior to that, I was educated and I ran daily employed, acting in my church, my son's school activities, and my husband's and my social life. Life was very good. Twelve years ago, my husband left me, and I moved to Israel from Terrell. I have four women who work for me. Between them, they work 60 hours a week. Their salaries are paid for my day care. I do as much as I can, but I'm unable to do some things as wash the dishes take a shower, do my laundry, write grocery list, make her change my bed, sweep the kitchen floor, cook a meal, that sort of thing. I do not have an extravagant lifestyle. I live below the poverty level. I do not own a vehicle in public transportation is not an option in Whistle. I get most of my food from a food bank. Therefore, I am wearing, I was given six years ago, comes from a thrift shop. My shoes are five years old. I never entertain. I live in government subsidized housing. My only income is SSDI. I have no family to live with, and institutional state can't even be thought of.
since the government proposes to close them too, which begs the question, where am I going to live and where will I go? If these proposals go through, I may well be the next document of the White House. <laughs> and it won't pay rent. Please, I know you should these to be cut by Medicare. But please don't put them on the back of those of us who can lease up for it. And be reminded of the woman in front of me in the grocery store a few weeks ago. She was wearing a full leg fur coat and purchased two lobsters, paid for them with food stamps. I met her in the parking lot a few minutes later. She drove away in a Lexus. I can't afford a lobster, but I desperately need the services of my personal attendant. They provide me with some much needed services, but also have become good friends. I hope you will arrive at a positive income for, outcome for me. Well, you come to the one to go to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. I see that. There's a question? No, it's no, it's no question. It's just I, I'm sorry we're visiting each other again under these circumstances, but I am happy to see that you, you still have the same zip you've always had. Thank you. So I'm on Medicare now, 
And uh, the help that the Quinty program gives me allows me to get the medications I need, allows me to see the specialists I need to see out of state, because guess what? We don't do liver transplants in the The doctors describe my condition as end-stage liver disease. Not End-stage is not something any of us like to talk about. I especially don't like talking about it when it's directed at me. If I am fortunate enough to get a liver, and there are a lot of people who don't end up getting livers, there is much more demand than there is availability. Without the Quimby benefit, I'll be destitute. The share of what I would have to pay for that surgery, uh, I don't have any way to pay for the rest of my life. So, I urge you not to make those cuts. And I did. I called them cuts. You know, I looked at the document called The Language of the Budget. And in looking through that, most of these aren't cuts. They're, they're repealing prior legislation. Things that the people of the state of Maine have through you folks thought were good ideas, thought we should do. And now all of a sudden, we're asking in one fell swoop to repeal all those. I'm asking that you reconsider that, try to think of a different way. Like most other people, I'm willing to help. Give me a call, I'll talk. I don't generally uh, have difficulty sharing my opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stuart. Thanks for coming.